take a look at that beautiful Santiago all around us Hello everybody, como están? Ian Luis here and today I want to explore with you the city that sleeps in a valley the city of mountains and to the place where I was born, the place that has seen me grown and the place that I like to call my hometown Welcome to Santiago de Chile and to begin with this city tour, let's go where everything began to the hill Santa Lucia Let me show what I got for you girl So won't you come along to our first destination, Cerro Santa Lucia. And there are a few things very important for us, the Chileans, that happened in this hill. And no, the important things are not the girls dancing, rather what happened here, exactly at this point, about 500 years ago. Because back in 1540, Pedro Aldea, the Spanish conqueror, came all the way from Peru to this place and settled the first castle in Chile. Y'all know where to go, stuck inside his prison cell. Bye bye, now you're gone. Look to cats in the cradle, but you are moving on. Guess I had to see you later. Oh, yeah, right now there's something in the air. Seeking for prestige and gold, Pedro Aldea gathered a group of people and they came all the way down here to Santiago de Chile, where nowadays is Santiago de Chile. In their way down here, Pedro Aldea and the conquering group crossed through the Atacama Desert. You can imagine how hard that must have been. Just think about it for a second. That means walking with canyons and armors and every kind of heavy gear through the desert, through the sun, without seeing a single drop of water. Pretty terrible, eh? And they saw that the Aborigine people here was able to farm. That basically means that there was nice soil and a river that brings water. Which nowadays is more like a leak of water than a river, but still, it was worth going. And from the whole valley they decided to stay here, in Cerro Santa Lucia, because here they could see if anybody was approaching. Besides, the hill is not so high, and that means that they can get easily to the ground. I'm really happy right now because I think that I have completely nailed the day to shoot this video in Santiago and I actually waited several weeks until I could shoot it because you see now it's summertime for us and these first two weeks of February is when the most of the inhabitants of Santiago are out for holidays that basically means that you don't have as many cars you don't have as much traffic of course and you don't have as much pollution as we usually do so that being said Let's keep walking to our next destination, La Plaza de Armas. This one right at my back is the Teatro Municipal, which basically means the main theater of Chile. Yeah, that would be the exact translation. It is not, but it is, believe me. <laughs> Whereas that building, which is right at the front of the main theater, is something related with the big guys of the FACH. And the FACH is basically the Air Force of Chile. And those are tourists. Condorito, classic cartoon from Chile. So once that the Spanish people decided to go down of the hill Santa Lucia, they settled here, in Plaza de Armas. And this one, right behind me, that nowadays is the house of the post mail, where the officer of Chilean post mail used to be the house of the gobernador. Goberna the gobernador. The major. And of course, that used to be the house of Pedro de Valdivia. Whereas, at my right, we have the Cathedral of Santiago. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, it is closed. 
next stop. By the way, it's so ridiculously hot. Must be like 34, 35 degrees. That's like 95 Fahrenheit for our friends from the States. I know what you must be thinking so far, that I'm a PhD in history, right? And that's true. No, it's not. It's just what I learned in high school. <laughs> but overall, I'm just trying to summarize and to show you the highlights of this city. Of course, this could be a five, six hours walking tour, but no, I'm doing it in hopefully 10 minutes. Very considerate from my part, you know? Not trying to take you too much time. <laughs> We have arrived to the most iconic building in Chile, La Moneda, our governmental palace. You see, the exact translation of this building, La Moneda, in English would be the coin. Yes, our governmental palace is called the coin. But the reason for that is because it has not always been our governmental palace. I don't know since when it is, but before that, before it was our governmental palace, the palace of the president, it used to be the place where the coins were made. Yeah, that's where the name comes from. But this building is not only iconic because the president works and do their three key things here, I would say. It is also where it began one of the darkest episodes of Chile. You see, the man who is right behind me is the president, Salvador Allende, who was elected in 1970. He was a socialist that tried to install a communist regime, government, whatever you can call it. I'm not so sure if there's too much difference between a communist government a communist regime, but that's not up to the point. But the thing is that in the three years that Salvador Allende was in the power, he pretty much took the country into bankruptcy, where there were basically no goods and no service, and in 1973, a guy called Augusto Pinochet took the power by the force and then began a dictature. But that's a whole topic that I don't want to go in. Moreover, I'm starving. It's like four and a quarter and I haven't had lunch. We're gonna head to the central market of Chile. Smells good. <laughs> what am I gonna eat? Lunch is ready. Ceviche. Ooh, I'm so hungry. Let's see how this is. Mm. Really nice ceviche. The great thing about ceviche is not only that it is a delicious food, but it's also so refreshing. It has so much lemon that it makes you sweat a lot. And for this kind of days, it's just perfect. My second dish did just arrived. Some reineta fish and some salad. We have to keep it healthy, healthy and delicious. How about the restaurant? Pretty good. You know, something is not a cheap place at all. And in terms of food, it's not cheap either. This was like $16 roughly and it was pretty decent in terms of food price and quality i would give it a 3.5 out of 5. nice Ooh, so full of people it's insane <laughs> it's just impressive so, looks with pillas those are very typical here in Chile. The cakes, not so much, but the sweet beers, that's wonderful stuff. But I'm already full, and I have a half liter of beer, and I'm, 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 I'm fine by the time. Woo! <laughs> barbecue, look. <laughs> Before we change of neighborhood, I wanna show you two more places. And we have just arrived to one of them. Los Tribunales de Justicia. After a small stop in the courts of justice guaranteeing that I have a clean background, we're gonna go to the beautiful and colorful Paseo Andes. I just wanna tell you something, it must have been something I forgot.
some hardcore parkour. Whew. <laughs> Okay guys, this has been Santiago's downtown and the day is not over yet, we still have one more stop and a great neighborhood called Bella Vista. See you there. I'm not sure if this is the last stop but we are not going to Bella Vista yet, I made a little bit of changes in the schedule. We're gonna climb one very last hill, the Cerro San Cristóbal, which is part of the Metropolitan Metropolitan Park, which is the fourth biggest in this world. And in between us, that's kind of tricky because more than a park is just a hill, a massive hill, which is, of course, a park, and that's why it's so big, the fourth one. But after climbing two hills, I'm already feeling really exhausted. So for this one, we're gonna be a little bit of cheating. That's why we're going in... There we go, cable cars. Woo! Haha! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Exhausted climbing this hill. No, just joking because I took the cable car. <laughs> but today we have a beautiful sunset going on. And take a look at this the top of the San Cristóbal hill. Sometimes I make this life thing harder than it needs to be. I must say that I'm impressed about how beautiful the city is today. It's like Santiago dressed up with the best of its suits so I can show it to you, you know? And that's something that's quite unique because this city generally uses like really crappy clothes. Pollution basically. <laughs> I've been thinking about if whether I should fly my drone or I shouldn't. And the thing is this, the light is just amazing. The way we're looking at Santiago right now, it's something that doesn't happen often at all. And on the other hand, you might have seen some Athena, some cables, tons of people. So summarizing the whole scenario is like, I'm having a perfect moment and light to use a drone, but I have the perfect scenario to crash my drone. So I really don't want to over risk my drone. You already know what happened with the first one I have. In conclusion, I'm not gonna fly it here, but I will walk 500 meters down the hill and I will fly it here. So many lights, lights, lights with us tonight, night, night. Don't let them go to waste. Look into my crazy day we have just had and what a crazy sunset we're having take a look at this from the early morning to the midday of course the sunset right now everything has been just perfect moreover we have been able to walk and explore quite a lot damn we have done it there's not too much left to show you about Santiago well there could be tons of stuff but I want to keep you calm but I have the feeling that this is not gonna be a 10 minutes video so I will try to keep the other one a little bit shorter so you can go to bed and do your stuff. <laughs> okay, my good friends, it is time for me to go. Still have so much. I don't know where am I going. There's still more to see. We have more Santiago left to explore, but that will not be in this video. Will be in the next one. In the meantime, you know what you have to do. Like, share it and subscribe. The three key elements to keep playing rock and roll and keep exploring. <laughs> okay guys, ciao ciao, bye for now. <laughs>